Hey guys, I'm Teresa. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today we are catching up on week three of Me Made May, so I'll be sharing what I've been sewing and what I've been wearing. So it's been another good week of alterations. I've got some small ones and a bigger project that I work through that I'm gonna share. I think the first one I'll show you is this dress. This is the laneway dress. It's another Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern. So I've made quite a few of hers. This one, I really do love so much about it. The fabric is super cool. It's a Robert Kaufman flannel, cotton flannel, um, cotton, brushed cotton is what it's called in the UK. Sorry, I try to remember my terminology correctly here. It looks navy blue, so it has very much like a deep blue look to it. But if you look up close, hopefully you can see it's actually black and blue. It is super cool fabric. It's actually really warm. And my aim for making this was that I would have something that I could wear in the colder months with tights. And the fit is great on this one. I really do love it. I got this fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. It's really just nice to wear, comfortable to wear, but I haven't been wearing it as much as I would like to, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. So the first one is I decided to line this. I thought with the fabric as sort of textured and this flannel brushed cotton thing would probably stick to my woolly tights, which I like to wear in the winter. And so I decided to line it, but I didn't line it with anything slippery. I decided to line it with this cotton voile fabric. So it is obviously a completely different color. I liked the idea of the contrast. So you can see the difference between the two. It's a fun contrast and it really does stand out. Obviously the lining you couldn't see on the inside anyway. But the issue is this fabric against the cotton flannel fabric, they were rubbing and causing the lining to ride up way more than the dress ever would have been riding up because it's not that close fitting. It's relatively full as it goes down the legs. And it's been bothering me for a while and I just haven't been wearing it very much. And so I decided to whip this lining out, which was easy. I'd actually hand stitched this lining in and I'd made thread chains in it to attach it to the bottom of the dress. I think it's one of these things where when I took the trouble to do something extra for it, I felt like I didn't want to undo that work. That work was done for a reason and I didn't really sit and assess was it worthwhile? And is that something that I need to necessarily leave in there? So I now have this nice long bit of fabric I will say it's very sheer and I wouldn't want to use it. It's actually not as nice quality as I was expecting. I think I got this from like eBay or something like that. So it's not very nice fabric, but I can totally use it for a muslin. So I've got some nice, good muslin appropriate fabric. And as far as the dress itself, the other thing is just the solid blue, I feel like is a little bit boring. Now I can wear it with bright colored tights, which I have done but I feel like I preferred it when I wore it with a little red belt and a little cardigan. This is another one of these things, guys, where I'm too easily influenced by other people <laughs> when they say these things, but I've had someone say to me at work that it almost looked like the matron's uniform. So I have been a matron in my hospital before, a senior midwife uniform, I should say. It's like a navy blue with a red piping. And so the combination was just a bit reminiscent to them, which like, I know it doesn't look like one of those outfits, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. And it was really putting me off wanting to wear this dress, especially for work, which is when I'm most likely gonna be wearing it. So I decided one thing that I could do is just have some different accessories. So I am gonna order some different colored belts. I'm gonna order some different colored snag tights. I already have some quite vibrant snag tights. So snag is a brand of tights, no affiliation. I just think they're great tights. And they do really funky colors and they fit really well and they don't snag funnily enough and they don't slip down as you're wearing them. So they're really great, fun, bright tights. And so I think I'm gonna get more of those tights more different colored belts that I can wear to style this. And I think those two things, honestly, are just gonna completely turn it around, especially now that I've taken this lining out. Now I will say that this is definitely quite warm fabric, so it's probably going to be much more for the colder weather, but at least now when I get to that point, I'm gonna have a dress that's a lot more wearable. 
Next up is a dress that some of you might recognize if you've been following me for any length of time. And it is this beautiful dress that I made for Christmas. So this is a normal blouse dress hack. So a dress hack of the normal blouse that I added a couple of beautiful tiers onto. I love this color. It is an incredible red linen fabric, so vibrant, extremely Christmassy. I really, really like this dress. Loved wearing it at Christmas. It's so comfortable. It's nice and roomy around the waist, but it's also just so pretty. I love the details of the puff on the sleeve. Big favorite dress. However, around Christmas time when I was making this, I was finding that it was trickier to take on and off over my head than I expected. It was a combination of the fact that the linen itself was quite bulky because I did French seams. Did I have French seams? Maybe I'm just making that up. No, it's serge seams, but it's bulky with all the gathering around the waist, specifically the waist area. And it was difficult to get up over my bust, over my shoulders to get it on and off. Now I did insert a side zip because I want it to be easier to get on and off, but I was still finding it a little bit tricky. And so I decided to go ahead and add buttonholes, which I know sounds really silly, but when I made it the first time, I didn't think I needed the buttonholes. I thought I could get away with just having buttons stitched on and still get it on and off because I could on my muslin because it was a top and it was lighter weight. It's a different thing when it's a full dress. So talked about this last week. When it's a full dress, it's a lot harder to wriggle in and out of. And so I decided to stick proper buttonholes on there. Small job, but now this is definitely easier to get on and off. Again, this is more for the colder weather. So I'm doing kind things for future Teresa rather than Teresa right now. But I really do want to wear that dress a lot come autumn and winter time. And now that I've done that, I can wear it with ease and take it off with ease. In a pinch, I can even wriggle it down over my shoulders and hips, which means that I'm never going to have the issue where I'm feeling completely uncomfortably stuck and struggling to get it off if I'm having a bad day with my shoulders. Next up is a bit of a fitting journey to make the Ashton Top by Helen's Closet. The Ashton Top is something that I've been thinking about making for a long time and then she introduced a sleeve expansion pack which meant that it was just even more versatile. It is a really basic shell top design, the initial design. It's very boxy in shape, you can wear it cropped or a bit longer. I feel like it's one of those, once you get it, you can make a million different tops in this and it will they'll all look different depending on what fabric you use, especially when you can put different sleeves onto it. So I felt like this was something that I did wanna make at some point and it seemed like a really good option for a refashion of an old skirt. So there's an old skirt that I had had that was made in this fabric. Let me just show you the fabric without giving too much away has this really incredible floral design. I really, really love this fabric. The colors are just incredible. I got this fabric from Hancock Fabrics way back in 2001, 2002 time, and I self-drafted a wrap skirt. I love the look of the wrap skirt. It was so pretty. I did end up having to add some buttons because it didn't really stay closed that well. I will say the biggest issue with this fabric, because it's a viscose fabric, it is super soft, super silky, really drapey, really lightweight, and it would just blow open with the slightest breeze. It was not very practical. I think it was great for like a beach cover up if you're wearing it over a bathing suit and you don't really care if it flashes open, but any other time, it wasn't ideal. I definitely had put some pins in it from time to time, like a safety pin, just to keep it closed to make sure that it didn't draft open when I was going around. Like I said, I really love the look of this and I did think about whether I could refashion it into another skirt, but with the amount of fabric that I had, the only thing I felt like I could do was quite a short skirt that would be a little bit above the knee, but knowing how lightweight this fabric is, Having a fuller gathered skirt just above the knee that I guarantee you would be wafting up constantly was not what I wanted. It was not the fix. It was not going to be the solution to the problem that I had. So I decided the best option was to try and make a top out of it. And the one that I thought made sense was the Ashton top. But I knew that it was one that I was going to have to work on to get the fit right. As far as the sizing on this, there are different cup size options, but for different size bands. So I'm in the lower size band, which has a B sewing cup size. I am an E sewing cup size. So I knew that that was not going to be a perfect fit for me. I actually emailed Helen of Helen's Closet to ask her whether she thought I should make the smallest of the larger size band 
or do a full bust adjustment on the size band that fits my high bust and she recommended the latter. So to go with the smaller size, do the full bust adjustment. And so I decided if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do a muslin because I know that there's a very good chance that it's gonna need some adjustments and I was definitely not wrong. So the first version of the Ashton top that I made it is extremely unwearable. I made it from a scrap. So my muslins, I often use old fabrics, especially if I wanna have something with a similar drape. This is a scrap from the Barden dress that I made for my frugal frocks last year. It is very tiny in this space. I can try it and try it on, see if I can give you enough of an impression. I literally had to cut this off to get it off. I could barely get it over my head. I mean, it's t it was tight over the head. It is ridiculously tight over the arm. So if you can imagine, it's like right, it's literally like digging up into my armpit. And even this to get it across so that it's halfway is really, really tight. So this was what the one that I went with just like based on my high bust measurement with a full bust adjustment. I think it was a three inch full bust adjustment. Extremely no good, like mega thumbs down. And so I decided, you know what? It's so tight here. What if I just size up a couple of sizes, which would mean that it would then fit with my full bust measurement and maybe it'll be okay. So this is another scrap that I had. I This was like proper muslin. The first one I thought I might get away with making a wearable shirt. So I did the whole like um, bias binding and the hem and everything. This one I just did rough and dirty muslin version just to see how it was gonna work out. And this one I'm not gonna put on, but it was extremely big under the arms. So it was like full bra on display under my arms when I was wearing this one. So it's like, okay, definitely <laughs> this is not right. But it was actually pretty good otherwise. Like I liked where the neck was sitting. The fit over the bust was fine because it fit my full bust measurement. And it looked pretty good over the waist and the hip as well. So what I did is I kind of sat and pinched out and I realized if I just raised the armholes up by an inch, that would actually, it looked like it was gonna work pretty well, but I didn't wanna take a chance. So I decided that I was gonna make one more muslin before I made the final one. Well, one more in the hopes that that would be good enough. So for this muslin, I decided I would do the full, I try the facing rather than the bias binding, but I would fully finish it just because again, I felt pretty good that that should work. And I just wanted to be extra sure before I cut into my old precious skirt fabric. This is a fabric that's left over from a nightgown, no, a robe that I made for my niece. I made her the Helen's Closet uh, unfolding robe, I think she calls it now, but it's no longer on the market. But this fabric is so gorgeous. It's a r art gallery fabric. It's a viscose chalet, rayon chalet. It is so silky. It is so lovely. I was excited to find that I actually had enough of this. I think I only had like, 70 centimeters and I was still able to get this top out of it, which I thought was pretty good going. I did line the facing with a different fabric as a contrast for the front facing, which is actually fabric that I used on my niece's nightgown as a contrast. So I knew that it would work together. The colors work really well together. This one, I will say, turned out pretty freaking awesome. Now I did think that the fabric with the moons it might be a little bit too cutesy, bedtimey. I wasn't sure if I would want to wear it outside. It might just be more for PJs. But I put it on with some jeans and it's super cute. I love it. The color is great. The, the moons on top of it are super fun and punchy. I actually really, really love this top. And so I thought, great, I can go ahead and make a top out of my precious fabric. So I made a version out of this gorgeous floral. And funnily enough, it fits me. It looks generally pretty good, but I don't like it as much as the moon muslin. I just, I feel like I like this fabric as a skirt, but I think being so close to my face, I just don't feel like I'm loving those colors right up against me. The shape of it, it's not quite as drapey. So it's, this is just a straight up viscose. The other one was a viscose chalet. And I feel like the viscose chalet is that bit lighter and that bit drapier. And I think that really helps a bit as well. So it's funny that I ended up with a 
muslin that I'm happier with than the finished article. I will say I, I'm going to wear this. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm not going to wear it. And I was not wearing that skirt. So, you know, it's one of these situations where that skirt that had been sitting in my wardrobe for 20 years doing nothing. So I'm definitely glad that I went ahead and made the other top, but it's not probably fitting into my wardrobe, fitting into my style as much as I would have liked, but still better to be wearing it less often than not at all. So I'm still happy that I went ahead and did the refashion and I'll be able to wear that fabric now because I really do love that fabric. It's really, really beautiful. And I imagine probably a lot of you are going to say you love that top. I mean, it looks really great. And you know, it's one of these things where you're not wrong. Like I think it does look good, but it just doesn't feel super like me. And that's just going to happen sometimes, right? That's just part of sewing. They're not all going to turn out absolutely perfect. But I did get a pretty dang cute muslin out of it. And so it's definitely a bit of a win-win if you ask me. Now, one more thing I wanted to just share as lessons that I've learned by pulling out all of my old clothes that I haven't been wearing as much. There are a couple of dresses that I don't wear a ton. So this one is called the Akini dress. I can't remember the name of the designer, but I'll pop it up on the screen. It's a beautiful bias cut dress that just fell off the hanger. <laughs> it's a bias cut dress with a really gorgeous cowl neck neckline. It's finished all with French seams. It's a gorgeous rayon fabric, a viscose fabric from Dashwood Studio designed by Rachel Parker. She's one of my favorites. I like this dress a whole heck of a lot. It's really beautiful and I really enjoy wearing it. The other one that I want to talk about, you'll understand why these are connected in a minute, is this dress. This is a zero waist dress by Schnitchen Patterns that I made for the Frugal Frocks last year. Again, it's a ton of fun to wear. It is quite out there as far as the style. It's pretty short. It's very 70s. I do feel like it's a very fun one. The thing with both of these is that I just don't have a whole lot of opportunities to wear them. The bias cut dress is in a very, very lightweight fabric. It doesn't look great layered up because of the cowl neck. I feel like it just needs to be on its own and it's basically just praying for some hot days. It is so great to wear in the hot weather and when it is a warm day, perfect. I'm gonna wear it, I'm in my element, no issues there. As far as the zero waist dress, like I said, it's a bit out there style wise. It's a ton of fun to wear, but I can't wear it for work. And it's definitely something that I would need to just be probably not having to do anything super practical with those sleeves because they might get a little bit in the way. But what I would say, and what I think is useful for me to recognize for both of these dresses is that there are gonna be some garments that are in my wardrobe that I'm not gonna wear a ton and I'm okay with that. Now, I think there is definitely something to the idea of wanting to have things in your wardrobe that you're wearing regularly, that you're getting a lot from, that you're loving, but I do also think there's something to be said for those garments that are a little bit special, a little bit unique that you like, but aren't necessarily everyday items. They don't all need to be worn all the time. The reality is these things I'm not wearing as often I'm gonna be keeping them for years and years. They're gonna be in my wardrobe and they will last a long time because I'm not wearing them a huge amount. Now, if I lived somewhere in like a warmer climate than I do in the UK and I had a lot more hot sunny days, I'd be wearing both of these a whole lot more. But the reality is in the place that I'm living, the situation that I'm in, I'm just not gonna have a huge amount of call for these dresses, but I'm still gonna keep them and I'm still gonna love them and I'm still gonna probably make more dresses that aren't 100% the most practical thing in my life because they're fun and I like to wear them and they bring me joy and that is good enough for me. So I think it's just one of those things you're probably gonna be on one side of the fence or the other, but for me, I'm totally cool with making dresses that are not super practical, that aren't gonna be worn a ton if I'm gonna enjoy them when I do wear them. All right, now let's get on to what I wore for week three of Me Made May. On the 15th of May, we were at home. I didn't leave the house, had a super cozy day at home, and so I was wearing super cozy clothes. I was wearing the Calypso top, which is a Sinclair Patterns pattern. I didn't get the great 
fit on this one I will say it's one of these things where it fits basically like a lot of ready to wear tops would fit for me a bit tight around the bust area not super well shaped around the hips either but I don't really care it's a really fun top I love the look of it and this fantastic color blocking was just so inspiring for me I hadn't really done anything in the way of like a shaped color blocking before and I honestly felt like I didn't know where to start when I made this top, I felt like I totally understood it. I loved playing around with where the different colors were going to go. Um, this is all scraps as well, you know, on the top. Great scrap buster, really fun to experiment with. And it has ha helped me to color block things in the future without being afraid, feeling a little bit more like I know what I'm doing. So I love this top. It makes me happy. Not the perfect fit, but I don't really care. I'm just bumming around at home. I wore this with my Stella joggers from Tilly and the Buttons. So these are a really cozy, comfortable pair of sweatpants. Nice little combo, super cozy at home. In the photo, I've also got my closet core poof. So I know a lot of you guys will have made the same poof, which is filled with old fabric scraps. Totally great scrap buster overall. It's a nice one that lives in my living room that makes me really happy. Brings a little punch of color into our living space. On the 16th of May, it was a really beautiful, warm, sunny day, and so I was able to wear my Isla wrap dress. This is a new dress that I made recently. It's a Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern. I really do love this dress. It's in the most dreamy cotton double gauze fabric. It's a CU at six cotton double gauze fabric. This fabric is so comfortable and soft. It basically feels like a really old t-shirt that you probably should throw away because it's threadbare and it's just coming to pieces, but you don't wanna get rid of it because it is so soft and snuggly. But obviously this fabric is not threadbare and it is not wearing away. It is brand new and it is just that ridiculously soft after you wash it the first time. I love this dress. It's got this really cool wrap in the back, which I know you can't see in this photo, but it's a really beautiful design and I'm excited to get to wear this one in general because it's cotton double gauze. It is really nice and breezy on a hot day, but it's also got a little bit of body to it when it's a little bit cooler. So I feel like it's one that I will definitely be reaching for and I feel like it will have a really great place in my wardrobe. On the 17th of May, I was wearing the Matilda shirt dress. This is a Megan Nielsen patterns pattern. It's a really beautiful shirt dress with princess seams. I really do feel like I got a really nice shaping over the bust area, over the waist and the hips. This is such a comfortable dress to wear. I've made a couple of these dresses and I have been meaning to make a top, like a just a shirt version as well. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. I definitely need to do that. But this is such a beautiful dress. This one is probably my favorite. I don't know. I can't pick a favorite between the two. This is in a really lovely cotton lawn fabric. It's a Atelier Brunette fabric and it is in this incredible color that I would describe as like a navy purple, which I don't think exists, but it's kind of like a soft aubergine, soft eggplant kind of color. It looks blue in a lot of the photos, but it's definitely a purpley color. I really love the color and it has these really cute origami birds all over it. It's such a beautiful fabric. It's such a beautiful design. I really do love this one. I love the length of it. I love the size of those great patch pockets on there with the angle that are just super cool. So this is definitely a big favorite. And this is one that I really, really love to wear on a hot day. This is like one of my favorite things to wear on a hot day because the cotton lawn is just so lightweight and breathable. But it is one of these things as well that I don't wear as much as I probably would like to because I don't feel like it works that great with tights. I feel like the cotton lawn tends to bunch up a bit with tights. So it's not the most practical, but I love it a lot. And I do wear this one. I find opportunities to wear this one when I can. On the 18th of May, I was wearing my newly adjusted La Brea Tea dress hack that I talked about last week. So I've inserted the zipper in the back so it's easier to get in and out of. This is a beautiful linen dress. I really love it. And I think it looks super cool with my linen Pona jacket. That was, I think in week one, I had a little hanging loop. So I'm getting all my, my recent refashions in there for sure. I think this is such a fun pairing. I think they look super cool together, especially with the black tights, black, po black boots, black bag. I feel like that is just a whole look right there. But I did wear this one with and without the jacket, depending on what the temperature was doing that day but I think it's a really cute combo. On the 19th of May, I was layering up with a lot of me maids. On the top as a layering piece, I had the Blackwood, car Blackwood cardigan. It's in a really beautiful bamboo rib knit that I got from Sister Mintaka. That is 
One of my most worn items for sure. The Blackwood cardigan is just super versatile with the shape and the design. It goes really well with anything from like jeans, to dresses, skirts. It just goes with everything. And the color is really, really versatile. So I was wearing that one over the top of my super basic tank. So early in the day, I was just wearing the tank top and the skirt, but it got a bit chillier in the evening when we were doing the photos. So the super basic tank is in this really gorgeous petrol blue. This is a free pattern by Half Moon Atelier. I really like this tank top, absolute staple in my wardrobe, and I was pairing it with one of my cami skirts. So the cami skirt is designed, well, it's actually like a free tutorial from the hemming. I will say that the size range on that tutorial is pretty ridiculously tiny, but you can very much use the principles and just size it up because the waist measurement is just one and a half times the length of your waist. And then the tiered section is just one and a half the length of that. So if you just wanna go ahead and use the instructions with whatever your size is, I think this is gonna be really easy to make really in any size. But this is a really cute elastic waist skirt that I wear really a lot. I made it last summer to basically copy a ready to wear skirt that I had before. And it was surprisingly versatile in my wardrobe and I wore it a lot even though I made it towards the end of the summer. So I'm excited that we're getting to the weather where I can start to wear this one again. And then I also had that with one of my favorite bags that I've made. This is the Hillside Tote by Noodlehead Patterns. Super cute pattern, really love the fabric that I've chosen. I feel like all of these colors go really well together and it felt like a really fun outfit to wear. On the 20th of May, I was wearing my recently ice dyed Zadie jumpsuit. So I talked about that last week. I ice dyed a jumpsuit that just the fabric was not working for me. It was looking really like scrubs and really frumpy and it does not look like scrubs, it does not look frumpy, and it was really fun to wear, and I can tell from just wearing it that once, this one is gonna definitely have a place back in my wardrobe, so I'm so glad that I went out and ice dyed it. Last week, it looks super cool, I love the colors, it's so much more vibrant and punchy and fun, and it is just so comfortable. It is one of the most comfortable jumpsuits. Anyone who's made the Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory will say the same thing, it's a great one, and it is now back in my wardrobe. And today, the 21st of May, I am wearing a gable top by Jennifer Lauren Handmade on the top that I recently shortened to make it much more comfortable. And then I've also got my Jenny overalls. These are a closet core patterns pattern. They're a fun combo, like wearing these together. They're a big wide leg on the bottom of these overalls, which make them really nice and breezy when it's a little bit warmer. I like wearing these corduroys. I, I This is a corduroy, I should say. I love wearing the corduroy overalls a lot. This is one of my very much most worn that I made from the spring of last year and it's a great combo. I don't think I've actually worn these together funnily enough. So now I think it's the fact that I had that top was just so long. It was really annoying to have it either bunched up or trying to tuck it down inside these overalls. So got a new outfit combo that I can have and it was fun to try it out today. I have been seriously enjoying going back looking at all of my old me maids, doing some refashions, making them work better for me. It is not a job that I normally relish, but it has been so satisfying to be able to work through these things over the last few weeks. I really hope that you guys are still enjoying Me Made May if you are taking part. I know that some of you have commented before that, you know, I think it's been a bit of a mixed bag how things have been going for you. As far as the outfit of the days, I do not love the mirror selfie. I don't think anyone really loves the mirror selfie. And it's been really nice because my husband has been agreeing to go for some little walks with me often after work in the evenings. So that way we can do the photos that way. And it's just nice to be able to get out. The weather has been so beautiful in the UK over the last week. That's one thing I will say is that I've been wearing a lot more summery makes than I normally would do in the UK because we've actually been having some really glorious weather. I was expecting to show you a lot more of my cozy colder weather makes never say never that entirely probably will come <laughs> as the rest of the month goes by but so far it's been really nice to be able to pull out all of those beautiful warm weather dresses and jumpsuits and it's been a fun month for me so far i hope you enjoy getting another update on what i've been working on i have got more coming up i've got some really good plans of some other refashions and i've already started cutting up another dress so we'll see how that goes over the next week and i will update you then if you did enjoy the video, I really do appreciate those likes. It really helps other people to help find my channel. Leave me a comment down below how your Me Made May is going. If you got any updates, good or bad, 
it's all good. It's real life, right? Sometimes things are going to be working out and sometimes they're not. And it's all about getting what you want from this challenge if you are choosing to take part. If you are interested in seeing more of my videos, make sure that you are subscribed down below and I'll see you all again next week. Bye bye!